Recently, I dived a bit deeper into the topic of RC Link via Crossfire, as I created a new custom antenna mount for the Recon Y6, as you could see in my last video. As I mentioned there, I found some hints to improve the connection between transmitter and receiver. The first issue can be the orientation of the antenna on the drone and on the remote. By default, most drones come with a horizontally mounted antenna. For long-range flights, this can be problematic at the turning point of the flight, as you can see in the simplified illustration and the short example OSD footage from a flight of mine. This is why I prefer a vertical setup for long-range flights. When you fly cinematic long-range flights, the drone is mostly level and all directions are well covered in most situations, even on a 180-degree turn. But a horizontal setup can also work very well. If you go for a diversity setup with two antennas in a 90-degree offset, I don't have a drone with this setup yet, but I will try it soon. In theory, this looks like a good solution as well. For Crossfire, you can set the RF profile to 50Hz, 150Hz, or dynamic. The dynamic setting automatically switches between 150Hz and 50Hz depending on your current link quality. But Crossfire is very conservative here. It switches early, and if you fly long distances, you will soon end up at 50Hz. So why lock the frequency? In theory, dynamic mode is good for getting the best connection for your current distance and situation. However, the Betaflight developers actually don't recommend using the dynamic setting because the RC signal smoothing in the FC firmware is tied to a fixed packet rate value and won't work properly with dynamically changing packet rates. If you are flying long range, keep it at 50 Hz. If you are racing or just flying close, 150 Hz should be fine. Good to know. You only need to lock the frequency on the receiver side, not the transmitter side. So you can set it separately for each of your drones. To do this, you need to do two things. Connect your remote control to the receiver of your drone. Powering up the receiver should work via USB power from your flight controller. Use TBS Agent Light and select your powered on receiver. Under General, find the RF profile entry and select the frequency you want to lock your receiver to. For the second step, go to the Betaflight configurator and connect your flight controller. Go to Presets and filter for RC Link Presets. Here you will find a preset for TBS 50Hz or TBS 150Hz to lock the packet rates. Select the same frequency that you have configured with TBS Agent Light. Under Options, select a filter preset according to the purpose of your drone. When applying the preset, be aware that your drone may feel different after applying the preset. The PIDs will feel more or less sensitive depending on the options selected here. Save and reboot to apply the frequency lock to the flight controller as well. That's it. Now your RF profile is locked to a fixed frequency for this drone. During my research, I came across the power output setting of the TBS Tango 2. In CE regions, we can only fly with 25 milliwatts output. The TBS Tango 2 can be set to an output of up to 1 watt. There are different opinions on the internet if a higher output really increases the range. I chose the dynamic output and limited it to 250 milliwatts. In the OSD, you can display the current output power of your transmitter via TX uplink power. If the limit is reached too early, you can go up to 500 milliwatts or one watt. If your antenna setup is good, you will be impressed how far you can go with less power, even with 25 milliwatts.